Cultures and Tradition, it's a project that started in uh, 2001. Uh, I had a chance to, uh, to travel to Asia with my wife and my in-laws. My wife is American Chinese. And then when I saw basically what was happening there, I was really perplexed of basically the number of people that live there in Asia, in China in particular. When I return, I'm from, uh, originally from Switzerland. I currently live in Los Gatos, California. I was really uh, trying to depict what I had basically seen during that trip. The images were not outstanding. But I took on a project to document and to document the people of the uh, Asia, China, Bhutan, Myanmar, India, among the, uh, the other country. 15 years later, is compiling about over 30 trips, I was able to put a book together. And it's a book that was designed by True North Edition and published by True North Edition. It comes in two versions the uh, limited edition of uh, 900 and the collector's edition that comes with a clamshell and a folio of limited to, uh, to 100. The difference between the, uh, the two book is same content. This book on limited edition is fully clothed and then I'm going to show you what I have in the, uh, the collector's edition. So the collector's edition come in a clamshell and what is really beautifully done, what we designed with True North Edition is a feel that is basically very spiritual. The box is very spiritual and it's a discovery process. So when you, you tilt the box is you get that feel of the spirit, heart, soul that comes totally alive. Inside the box, you have a welcome, basically, letter that shows my appreciation for you to, uh, to purchase the, uh, the book. And then what I really ask is for you to give me feedback on how did you feel when you, uh, you read the book. And then I have the first part of the, uh, the collector's edition, which is a folio. So the folio comes with three original print, printed by myself in the studio. And then they are printed with uh, a special printing technique called pisography. So what pisography mean is I mix my own ink. So every image comes as one of a kind. So you have one image of each of the chapters, the spirit, the heart, and the soul. And then these images are protected by vellum. So when you actually get your book, you can actually remove the, uh, the vellum. And then you can see the how the images look like so after the the folio is also uh debossed with culture in transition and with again the spirit heart and soul so when we go to the box to the the book now the book is a special specially made limited to 100 and it comes with a, a letter letter cloths so what was really important to us was not just the, or the visual of the book, was the feel and the smell. And I can tell you that letter from Italy is incredible. So the first thing we did when we received that book is we smelt it and said, wow, this is unbelievable. The cover also, same idea, is you get that basically feel, that spiritual feel of spirit, heart, and soul. And then what you do have is the people that contributed to the, uh, the forwards and the afterward, Anne Wilkes Tucker, Peter Fink, and Geir Jordan. So let me go inside the book now and then show you the type of printing that was done inside the book. So the book is 168 pages, uh, uh, was basically printed in Italy at uh, Longo, Longo Printers and then bound in Milan by Legatoria. So what was very unique about this book is the size. It weighs about over five and a half pounds. And the, uh, the, the, uh, the design is we basically play on the different colors that represent also the culture of Asia. The red that is replicated uh, from the clamshell to the book. And then also, as soon as you open the front page, you get that beautiful red that shows culture is in transition. So when you open the page is you want to actually feel the paper. The people was also very important to us. And the reason, one of the reasons we chose that press in Italy 
It was a paper. It's a 200 gram paper. It's called the Garapada paper that gives the same feel as what I do when I print myself. Now, when you get into the, uh, the book, is you get the full size images. So once again, 168 images that depicts basically what's happening with the, uh, the people in uh, Asia that I photographed over the, uh, the last 15 years. Uh, the, pr the book was printed with uh, seven colors, which was really important. So when you have a, a full page, this is a full Pantone color, so there is no mixed color. So we have a really true colors. And then the first part of the book is about the foreword by Gear Yordal. So Gear Yordal is, uh, is a book publisher, the owner of True North Edition, based in Hayward, California. Him and his wife, Kate Yordal, designed the book and were really instrumental of getting that book uh, the way it is. So Gear wrote about the philosophy, how we started with the book, and then the importance of why is it called Spirit, Heart, and Soul. And then when you actually read the book, it's about uh, all of us, what we actually aim out there. Um, and then it's our dream. It's about our dream and the dream of those people. And Wilkes Tucker, one of the most thought after curator in the US at this point, was also really excited to write about the introduction of the book. And this introduction, what is very interesting, is not just about the book, it's about her story, how her story visiting China parallel my story visiting China. And there's some really interesting quote in there that shows is that both of us feel that in China, as they don't have much of the uh, re recording uh, capabilities, this book could be some uh, big part of the, uh, the history. As soon as we get inside the book, we have basically the first uh, design element, the spirit, spirit of the villages, and the first chapter is about Bhutan, China, India, and Myanmar. So what the idea of the book is so that people can enjoy the images. So very little information on the images, but we'll, we'll tell you, I'll tell you a little bit later on what people are going to discover it at the end of the book. So the spirit of the village is, it's about those people that basically live their life and is how do they feel going through the transition. And what I found was those people going into a transition is not the visual transition that is uh, really important to them. It is not like the building new freeways, the new, uh, new houses that uh, are built uh, very fast. It's about their spirit. How is they feel that they have to maintain the spirit and maintain the younger generation to believe in their spirit. So uh, we have basically going through the, uh, the book, some of the, uh, the images that were photographed in some of the, uh, the festival in the, uh, the Miao cultures. Is an interesting image is in Bhutan on the, uh, with these little girls. So you will learn at the end what it actually meant to basically be able to photograph those, uh, those images. So the first chapter, goes goes along and then what you have is when we pause you have some quotes and then all the quotes become very important in that book because they are all the people that participated in that project so the first quote is from mm he is my guide in uh, in Myanmar which was very gracious to introduce me to his uh, to his culture uh, some of the images also were were photographed because I met some other guys that gave me access to private monastery like this one in, uh, in Bhutan. Um, so if I keep going along, there is some really interesting images about like these chess players. Is you see the depths of the image and that's when you have such dark images where the printing becomes really incredible. So it's, it's incredible printing. The, the pressmen at Longo were excited to do this project which meant that you have probably one of the best black and white book that has been, uh, that has been printed. Uh, again, uh, more quotes that, uh, that we have in the book is if I keep going, is there is a rhythm, is when you spend a little bit of time in this book, there is a rhythm that is really important and you're going to feel like our idea was you sit down 
on your in your in your home and then you just appreciate there's not just the images but the uh, the sequencing that went into that book we started uh, the book project in november 2016 and then it came to fruition now in two years later in uh, december 2018 when the uh, the book was ready to basically be exhibited so when i move along is I get eventually to the last page of the, uh, the spirit. So this image also very, very important because is there is a discovery process. So you look really deep into the images and you're going to lose the subtleties of the, uh, the images, like the hand touch, which is uh, not very common to have a display of affection in the uh, Asian culture. The second chapter is the heart, the heart of the Yi, is that was photographed in the Sichuan province. And then when I will show you the first image of the heart, is this image I felt could have been taken in the 1930s, 1960s by people like Andres Cortez. And those were photographed in 2016, 2017. This region want to stay autonomous from the, uh, the Chinese government. They are the poorest minority, the poorest out of the 56 minorities in China. And then what they have, they have a huge heart. And as soon as you basically discover them, it took me three years to actually get uh, a few of those images. They are really welcome you. So what we have is they live really in a land that is very, very um, uh, good for agriculture. And the reason they want to stay so autonomous so that they can actually control their destiny. They are really worried that if the, uh, the government comes and basically take over, build road, give them more, more amenities, they're going to lose of who they are. So like any photographers, as always, when you travel a lot, a uh, boy or a person that is going to point a gun at you. So that reminded me of Bill Owen. Bill Owens is a photographer from Hayward, California, known for suburbia. And he did photograph an amazing image of little Richie with a gun. So that's what I call basically this image is my little Richie of, uh, of China. This was also an image that uh, was actually the catalyst of me being able to photograph in that region. The, uh, this little girl, eight years old, is the image is titled the ring leader. Why was she the ring leader? Is I had to go through her to take any images in that village. She was incredible. We really bonded. And after a few years is I was able to give her images and then she was uh, very happy to see who she was in person. Now we have a, uh, a set of images here that is also really uh, depicting the, uh, the culture in that region. So on this side, you have the inside of a house. And then you see it's very, very basic. Behind that image is where the animal would live. And then you have just a little piece there that is the, uh, the kitchen. Now on the other side, it gives the impression of going into that dark side. But as you see, for them is the appearance of being really welcoming with the door is very, very visible in that book. So the, the year also, what was really interesting is the festival. So you see when they go to the festival, they have two festivals a year. One is called the Lantern Festival. And then they have this beautiful outfit that they are, that describe basically their, their history. So this costume, it takes about two years to actually make a costume and they each very unique, uh, telling the, uh, the story of their, uh, or their family. So another person that was really critical in my project was Jeff Jeffrey Tang. Jeffrey Tang is my guide in China. He's my master guide. And what is amazing with Jeffrey is he is uh, comes from a farmland. He, like myself, he was ra raised in a farmland. And we both can actually connect with, the, uh, with those people. So to basically become amicable with those people, we basically smoke tons of cigarettes, is we drink with them, and eventually there's that bond that, uh, that is created. So you can see on another page, another spread that is, uh, that is well done, is the interaction between the woman and her pig, and basically the mom and her daughter. 
So is at one point you see like how they both cherish the or cherish their the significant there. Uh, is the horses are really important in that region? That's pretty much their transportation. Everything is carried by horses. The are uh, the traditional way. And then what you have is during the festival they race the the horses. So it's bareback, and the game is they go around a uh, a track. And when the first person catch up the last person, the game is, uh, is over. So another thing that was interesting for me is when I took that image, this image was taken in front of a photography or store. And then in every houses that I've been to, I barely saw any photograph that was hanging on the wall, except maybe one place, is except one place. Now, uh, my in-laws, when they came to, uh, when I invited them to, uh, to travel to China with me in 2001, they didn't think that their China is, was their China anymore. China had changed really, really drastically and very fast. His growth was enormous already in 2001. And one of the best quotes that I got basically from my book here is when uh, my wife's dad says, the, this book, the images in this book is a real China, is a China that I do remember. So if I keep going, there is once again, is images that are really representative of this region when they travel to, uh, to the field. And uh, when I move basically to, to this image, which is the last image of the, uh, the second chapter of the heart, is really describing is what's happening in China with the culture in China. Is we have the, uh, the kids are raised by the grandparents. And it is interesting because the kids are probably the, the one that are the most prone to just, um, to just keep, keep track of the old new electronics. And when the, the grandparents want them to, uh, to be more into the, uh, the culture. The last chapter of the book is the soul and the soul of the Burkitsky. Burkitsky is the eagle hunter in Kazakhs. So what you have in, in this male dominated society, some of the uh, little girls are starting to become eagle hunters. In a documentary in 2016, it described basically the past of one little girl that became the most known eagle huntress in the Western Mongolia. So her name is Ashopan, and she has really uh, done a lot for the, uh, the, other, the other girls in terms of being uh, interested in staying educated and then still basically uh, embracing the tradition of eagle hunting. This is a ground where they would typically hunt. It's in a frigid winter, is the uh, very remote region, probably one of the, mo the most remote region that I have visited in the 116 countries that I have photographed at. This little girl is an inspiring eagle huntress. She is seven years old. He is at seven, she is basically not strong enough to carry a, uh, an eagle. So she does have a uh, little kestrel. And then she is really incredibly basically dedicated to, uh, to the, uh, the sport of, and the culture of eagle hunting. When I photographed her, she was so interested in looking at all the images that I had on my computer that we started to shoot at 1 a.m. in the morning. And then I did ask her, I said, what about tomorrow going to class? And she replied to me and said, when I talk to foreigners, I get an excuse not to go to class the, uh, the next day. So I spent time in, uh, in winter home, at the winter home of the, uh, the eagle hunters. And then well, I learned basically the tradition of eagle hunting. So eagle hunting is at, um, uh, they try to capture an eagle at birth and then they train the eagle to be dependent on their voice. So they hunt with the eagle, the uh, wolf, rabbits, uh, and then uh, foxes. And at the midlife of the eagle, they actually release the eagle. As the eagle has been trained to hunt, the eagle can actually survive in the, uh, in the wild, which is a great, great uh, philosophy. Uh, the eagle hunters are very, very proud of basically uh, their eagles and then their, their attires. All their attires are actually made from animals that they hunted. 
And again, you get a great quote from another guy that was very instrumental of uh, introducing me to this eagle, those eagle hunters, uh, Tilak. And then when is you, you keep going, is I have those eagle huntress. And those eagle huntress are, as I said, really dedicated not just to become a, uh, a good eagle huntress, but to be really educated. This is very important to, uh, to the family that the education is basically at the top of the list. This is very difficult to become an eagle huntress. You first have to be a very good horse, uh, horse, horse rider. So because is the, as soon as the eagle is released to basically catch the prey, they have to, uh, to gallop and then catch the eagle before it destroyed the, uh, the prey. Um, the, uh, this is again a typical example of an eagle huntress, very shy, but again, this power of their soul is you can really read through the soul. Now, I know all those stories is because is I had a Peter Fink, a, uh, an anthropologist from the University of, uh, of Zurich, professor of anthropology at the University of Zurich, wrote some very interesting uh, thought about the, the culture and what those people are going through the culture. Then after you have basically my reflection, telling my stories, why I actually uh, made that book and why I dedicated 15 years of my life photographing in, uh, in Asia. And then all those stories are actually told in the little thumbnail that we put at the end of the book. So those stories are not just about where they were taken, but about the feel is how did I feel when I actually photographed the, uh, photographed the uh, other people. Uh, so 108 images are part of the, uh, the book. And then eventually, when you get to the last page, you have the acknowledgement. This was really important to me to mention all the people that have influenced me in my career as a, uh, as a photographer. And then you have the technical detail that tells you about how the book was made, what it was made, what was the printing like, uh, really an interesting read. And finally, in the last page, you do have the, uh, the limited edition that is uh, printed and as I mentioned, it is published by True North Edition. And when you close the book, is you have that beautiful image of the, uh, the spiritual aspect of being a monk in Myanmar.